Welcome to January the 1st, five day solutions for the higher set. So here we've got the first question. The first question says in May 2011, the population of a country was 28 million. In May 2012, the following year, it had increased by 3%. Work out that population. So in other words, we need to increase 28 million by 3%. So 28 million, add on our one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. And we need to increase it by 3%. I like to use a multiplier, which is 1.03. 3% increase. So whenever we do that to, on our calculators, one, two, three, four, five, six times by 1.03, we get an answer of 28,840,000. That's it, so that's the first question done. Next question says, explain what is meant by a stratified sample. So a stratified sample is when you take a sample and the sample's in the same proportions to the uh, to the population. So in other words, whenever it's representative of the population. So a stratified sample is a sample that is in the same proportions as the population. Okay, the next question then says, a stratified sample of 30 is selected. Um, how many other are selected? So we've got 94 teachers, 16 teaching assistants, 41 admin, and 29 other. So the formula is the number in category, which is 29, divided by the total. So let's add up the total. So 94 plus 16 plus 41 plus 29. That gives us 180. And we just need to times that by the sample size, which is 30. And whenever we do it on our calculator, we get 29 over 180 times by 30. And whenever we do that, we get that is equal to 4.83 recurring. Now, you, strictly speaking, whenever you want to get a stratified sample of 30, I should do the same thing for teachers, the same thing for teaching assistants, the same thing for admin. See what the numbers are and see if I need to round up, round down and so on for each of them and make sure I get a sample size of 30. Now I'm going to be very lazy here. I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to say the answer. Well, I'm going to take five people, okay? Now, strictly speaking, I would need to check with the others and so on, um, but I'm just going to do this the quick way and I'm just going to write five. Okay, next. The next question says, A is directly proportional to the square root of B. That means that A, so A is proportional to the square root of B. And then it gives us the information and it wants us the formula. So we're going to uh, get rid of the proportional sign and write A equals K root b, that means k times root b. Remember k is the constant of proportionality. And then we're going to put in the numbers. So 50 is equal to k times the square root of b, which is the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So we get 50 equals k times 2. That means k is going to be 25. So k equals 25, I'm dividing the 50 by 2. So that means the formula is a equals, now we put this 2, or we put this 25 for k, into here, so we get a equals 25 times the square root of b. Uh, some people put the multiplication sign in here, I don't, but I make sure that my 25 is large and it doesn't look like the 25th root of b. Okay, <laughs> right, next question. The next question says, prove that 2n plus 2 squared minus 2n plus 1 is always odd. So what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to expand this, bra uh, this squared. Okay, so we've got 2n plus 2, and squared means we're gonna multiply it by itself, and then we're gonna take away 2n plus one, and that's in brackets. So let's expand the brackets. So, uh, 2n times 2n is 4n squared. 2n times two is plus 4n. Two times 2n is plus 4n, and two times two is plus four. And we're gonna take away, now let's expand this bracket. Now we've got uh, minus 2n, so it's minus 2n. We've got minus uh, plus one, so remember that's a minus one times uh, one, which is gonna be minus one. We're taking away everything that's inside the brackets. Just be careful there because it's a minus and a plus, we're gonna be subtracting. If this was a minus inside of the brackets, it would go to plus one on the end. Okay, so let's simplify this. We've got our four n squared here, plus eight n, and we've got plus four, and we're gonna take away two n, and we're gonna take away one. So let's simplify this. So it's four n squared. The eight n, uh, take away the two n, well, that's gonna be six n. And the four take away the one, well, it's gonna be plus three. So four n squared, well, remember our bottom mass, if we square something, and then times by four, which isn't even, well, that would be even. 
Then, if we add, well, six times a number, well, six times any number is even. And then we're going to add on three. Well, three is most definitely odd. So we've got an even plus an even, which is an even. And then we're going to add an odd. Well, that's going to then give us an odd, because an, an odd add an even is an odd. So that means that our answer is odd, and we've proved it. So QED.